Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the top 10 jigs and tips of 2019. For this video, I'm gonna start from number 10 and work my way up to the top to number one. Number 10, toolboxes. So I put out a video earlier this year on building a toolbox that is highly functional. This is entirely based off an ammo crate design some of the coolest joinery really in my opinion and some of the easiest joinery went into this toolbox i really enjoyed this project it's definitely something anybody can do at any skill level and two ways that you can carry it handles on the outside ends and a handle on the top if you want to carry it from the top it includes a tool tray i would rather build a few of these and have them in the shop rather than try and build a big tool chest and um, either put wheels on it or try and cart it around somehow. These toolboxes are really easy to build. They can come in all shapes and sizes. This one here is the one that I built using a dovetail box. You guys saw me build a bandsaw dovetail box. I put together this nice little toolbox for my carving tools so that I can take my carving kit camping with me. I looked at many videos and plans for toolboxes. I kept coming back to this ammo crate design because I really think ammo crates are kind of cool and functional and I thought that would be a great way to just build a toolbox. Number nine, building perfect plywood boxes. So I did a video on how I do perfect plywood boxes using rabbit joints. It's a really easy method. I love using rabbit joints with three quarter inch plywood in particular. It is some of the strongest joints and easiest joints to put together and square up. I show in detail how I use my kerf maker to achieve the perfect fit and get those boxes nice and flush without having to fuss with it or trim it or use a flush trim bit to finish it off. In this particular video, I was building two sets of nightstands and the carcass for those nightstands was basically a three quarter inch plywood box. Number eight, loose tenon joinery guide. I was asked by several viewers to put together a complete guide on loose tenon joinery and how to do it without any special tool such as a domino joiner, just using a plunge router and a few of the tools that you'd have in your shop already. Hopefully I've demystified some of the process for a lot of people who are hesitant about using loose tenon joinery. I have several videos that complement this process. One is about how to make loose tenons. The other video is about how to make your own self-centering mortising jig. So those will also be linked in the description below. You can do some really great joinery effective and easily using the method that I show you in my video. Number seven, the small parts jig board. I call it the small parts jig board, but it's really just a jig board. It's just a simple piece of plywood that you use to build up your own router jig instead of using the router table. I've seen some versions of it before, but I really came up with this type of jig for myself because of the hazards of trying to cut slots into smaller parts on the router table. I don't know about you guys, I'd rather be holding on to the router with both my hands in just about any scenario rather than trying to run a piece of wood with my hands exposed towards the router bit. I know generations of woodworkers have used the router table quite effectively and I still use my router table from time to time but I use it a lot less these days since I created the jig board. Number six, the bevel channel jig. Now this is a really super simple jig, one of the simplest jigs I've built this year and it's for the miter saw. It's kind of part and parcel of a mini series that I've been doing on the miter saw and how to use that more effectively in your workshop over going to the table saw. So go check out that video. This is a bit of a tricky cut, but the jig is dead simple. And again, it's using scrap plywood and scrap pieces from around your shop. And hopefully you can just avoid having to do it on the table saw and get more use out of your miter saw. Number five, the edge miter joint jig. So if you're building plywood boxes and you want nice clean edges, you don't want to do edge bending on all the outside edges, doing a miter joint is the best way to go. Using this jig on the table saw, you can build some really beautiful miter joint boxes. As long as the angles on your jig are correct and you've lined everything up properly, everything's going to come out perfectly square every time. Number four, the dado jig. 
Now this is the miter saw dado jig. This jig is a very, very simple strip of wood that is attached to the back plate of your miter saw that allows you to use the miter saw effectively in the same fashion as you would a radial arm saw. In the video, I go through the whole process of why that works the best way using this jig. And so go check that out. If you've got a piece of wood that is less than 12 inches wide and you're using a sliding compound miter saw, this is a great way to cut dados into that board widthwise. Number three, my multi-function addition to my workbench. This was something I did early in the year and it's something I've been trying to get to for quite some time. I started investing in a few different things for my shop. I realized that having a big front clamping system was totally unnecessary. I went with more of a Festool sort of inspired multi-function top for my workbench. I do not need as much surface space to work with as I thought I did. This was designed to be something that you can make for virtually any workbench. When I'm doing a front clamping configuration, I still use that ledge that's at the front of my bench, but instead now of having permanent clamps at the front, I just use my Veritas hold downs in the dog holes at the front of the bench, and it works out fantastic. I really couldn't be happier with the way this is set up. Everything on this workbench is exactly the way that I want it. And it's been an evolution from a very simple sort of Scandinavian style workbench to what it is today. It is fantastic. So go check out the video. If you have even a simple plywood top workbench, this might actually be a good way of extending the functionality for you. Number two, box joint jig. The box joint jig video that I put out this year uses a machine template that you buy online. Also, if you can find the same variety in a dovetail jig, that would probably work as well. What I did was I took that machined metal template and I incorporated it into a jig that allowed me to do box joints pretty quickly and effectively. This video shows you how to set it up, how to calculate the size of guide bushing that you need, and which router bits are the best for getting the best results. Of course, I used a spiral upcut router bit, and that seemed to give me the best results for making box joints using this jig. Out of all the box joint jigs that I have built, and I built quite a few of them over the last couple of years, this one is probably the most accurate and gives me the most flexibility in terms of size and the type of boxes that I can build using it. This video actually got a lot of comments, a lot of attention, a lot of questions from people looking for the templates that uh, the one that I use in the video is no longer uh, available as it seems. That was a ShopFox template that I bought on Amazon. It doesn't look like they actually produce it anymore, but if you can find something similar to that, or if you can find a dovetail template, which effectively is the same thing. You could use a dovetail template. I know there was somebody in the comment feed on that video who said they were making uh, a CNC version or they were coming up with a schematic for making a CNC version of this jig. And finally, the number one jig for this year of 2019 has to be the dovetail bandsaw jig. I know a, a lot of you missed this video. I can only assume that a lot of people avoid dovetails because A, they're either tired of hearing about dovetails or B, because they are so frustrating for some people that they don't even bother to attempt them. I have used my General Tools dovetail jig, which is basically a machine template that allows you to cut the tails and the pins quite easily using a router. That's kind of a one size dovetail jig but it doesn't give you the flexibility or the look that you get with hand cut dovetails. One of the things I wanted to do this year was to make hand cut dovetails easier to do in the workshop and I think the jig that I came up with for the bandsaw worked really really well. I was pleasantly surprised even on the first run when I did this I made a box that came together really nicely. The beauty of this is that I can lay out and mark my dovetails using the marking guide that I have 
and do any size, any type of size or any type of dovetail that I want. And that's the beauty of hand cut dovetails. They are custom, but the satisfaction of cutting dovetails by hand and being able to use the bandsaw as part of the process to get everything right, it's still very satisfying. And I have to say, between using a machine jig, like the General Tools jig, and being able to cut these by hand, I much prefer being able to cut these by hand using the bandsaw jig. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. So out of all the jigs this year, I have to say that one is definitely the most valuable. That one is the one you should go check out. And that concludes the top 10 jigs and tips for 2019. It's been a crazy year here on YouTube. There have been a lot of changes here on YouTube. I'm not gonna get into them, but remember all the folks that you subscribe to, you will see a subscription tab up in the left menu. Go to that tab. Click on that once in a while so you don't miss any of your videos. That's what I do as a YouTube viewer. For 2020, I'll be getting more and more into home-based workshop tools because that is really kind of where I live. I'm not a big industrial shop. I'm not going out and getting a big warehouse and building a brand new workshop. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm gonna help you guys keep going with the tools that you have. So there'll be some exciting stuff coming up in the new year. There'll be more maintenance videos, more, more jig videos, and I can't wait to get started in 2020. If you wanna to donate to this channel, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, have a safe and happy holiday. Enjoy it with family and friends and get out in that wood shop and have some fun. I'll see you all in 2020.